One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Hello in St. Moritz, tomorrow is a race day and as always in, before race days we prepare sleds and our equipment. This is one of our sleds here that we're going to show you how we prep, get it all race ready, get it nice and quick. The reason we call it skeleton is a lot to do with our saddles here because it looks a, a lot like a rib cage and it looks like that, that's what's holding you in so this is why the sport is called skeleton because of this weird thing here. So basically for the sled, these are hand holders and for me that was pretty important thing. Uh, I was pretty picky in all these things and I wanted to feel in my sled comfy that I, I, I just, I, I can steer and I, I can do my best during the run. Maybe Matt is not so picky as me in these <laughs> things and, but maybe he will get. <laughs> <laughs> well, each saddle is made for each indiv individual person. So you can't just jump from one sled to another because your saddle is going to be different. You're going to be further up or further down the sled, depending on your body size and your weight and where your weight is on your body. Um, so for me, it's all here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it's a very individual thing, the sleds. Yeah, normally before a race, uh, we tape sled pretty properly, we cover all the holes, everything which could could affect our dynamics. And then we can maybe roll over sled yep. and... Yeah, these are runner guards. Mm, I don't know when they were produced and who <laughs> decided that the runner guards need to be like that, but it's, mm. it's still working, probably in some 1970s. High performance uh, piece of equipment here. Uh, yeah. One of the things maybe which is the longest one, it's been the polishing yeah. of runners and every scratch counts. And so we are just fighting with all those scratches and, and trying to get them out from this material and to get as smooth as possible that we are running as fast as possible on ice. Yeah. You can spend hours in the sled room polishing all the tiny, tiny scratches out, making sure it's all perfect because you want it as smooth as possible because any, any scratches, any sort of slight things that aren't perfect is gonna slow you down. And in a sport where hundredths of a second count, this is, yeah, this is everything. This could be the difference between first and second. So you spend a lot of time perfecting how you polish, how, you, how shiny you make them and what, what techniques you use. And I think everyone has their own special way of doing it, but the the basics is you're trying to make them as shiny as possible trying to make them look like their mirrors when when you're finished with them also a really important thing is the rock uh, this bend and matt maybe can show uh, how the rock been put it on a sled so normally it's stood up and you do this at the start of every run and and this is very very individual as well similar to the saddle where it, it depends on your skill level and how you like to slide and uh, every, uh, loads and loads of different factors. But basically you can put pressure in the top of the runners. We have an Allen key here and it, it twists, uh, twists something which pushes down onto the runner, which makes it bow a little bit more. Martins is going to show you a bit. So the more I put in, the more it creates this sort of like rocking horse shape. Um, and when, when you, so the higher you would go, means the less control you normally have and but the easier it is to turn but you would need to find a balance of how much you go because if you go too much you can be skidding everywhere and that can be really really slow like that but if you go too much you have too much runners in contact with the ice and you have too much grip and that slows you down as well so it's trying to find a balance but it's so individual um, and it can be changed to like millimeters to how much you have so it's very very precise so sometimes uh, the runner choice uh, could be wrong in trainings and uh, there is opportunity to change them. Um, either you don't feel comfy, either you, you can't slide or, or it's not what you're expecting uh, also speed wise. It uh, should be pretty easy to change uh, and Matt will show us how it's been done. So you would first take all the rock out, all the bow that we were on about earlier. Uh, we have these pins that hold the, the runners in place. They, they go in the side and they, they make sure the runner doesn't fall out when you're sliding. You can then take it out here. These runners are really nice because they have a little bit cut out here, which makes it easier to take out. But you would take the, the runner out, change it, uh, come back, 
pop it back in like that, push this bit in, pop the pin back in and you are set to go for your next run. You would then change, put the rock in, really put some bow into the sled and hopefully this one's a better option. So to put the rock in, to be very precise, we use these calipers. Um, they give us so much like small measurements that we can change on our, our rock, which makes a massive difference. We'd measure the distance from the runner to the spigot guide here. And as Martin's put some more runner in, you can see the numbers getting bigger and bigger. And that's how much uh, bow we're putting in those, those runners. Martin's here is gonna show you how to get, get on the sled and how he would uh, steer the sled. He does sort of know what he's doing when he's on a sled, but I'm gonna give you a brief, brief explanation. Um, so as we're going down the track, you see us in corners and sometimes you can really see us waving. Um, it's a similar feeling to if you had like a rock on the end of a piece of string and you were spinning it round, it wouldn't be flat, it would oscillate up and down. And that's what we're trying to avoid normally. We're trying to be as straight as possible and as smooth as possible. Um, and for example, if you wanted to, if you're in a right hand corner and you wanted to stop the sled rising, you would then need to steer to the right. And how you would do that is you would put your left shoulder down and your right knee. Uh, this is because at the back of the sled, at the back of the runners, it's, it's almost like a knife, like an ice skate almost, um, where that gives you grip uh, and this is what turns you in. Whereas at the front of the sled, the front of the runners are really smooth. So you're almost putting the grippy part in here and to put the smooth part in here, and that's what, that's what grip and turns you round in the corners. Um, Martins does know how to do this. He does know how to do this quite well. Um, but yeah, you, you take years learning how to be as precise as possible, just the right amount, so not too much. Faster. Not I'm too, long lying here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so <laughs> it's, uh, he's, he's lying down a bit too much. Uh, another way of steering we have is with the feet, and you see this in big corners where you really want to turn the sled. Here Martins has got his Gucci slippers on. Um, but yeah, you would, you would turn your foot to the side, drag it on the ice, create friction and really turn that sled, almost use it as an anchor point. Um, but yeah, I probably wouldn't recommend doing it in these slippers, but <laughs> yeah, they, they look good. We'd love to show you the inside and how, and how the sleds work and, and what makes the sled fast and what, what could make it slow, but it's, it's very secret. If we were to open this up and other nations thought, oh, it's a really good idea, they could copy and, and uh, come and try and beat us. But um, yeah, it's very, very complicated. There's so many different things you can change um, to your driving style. Uh, each track, you can change uh, the settings inside to make the sled react in different ways. But yeah, unfortunately we can't, can't open her up to show you, but yeah, here she is. You can guess. Yeah. Thank you very much for tagging along with us and, and seeing how we prep our sled for race day. I ho hope you've learned something. I hope you've learned something as well, Martins. Um, and uh, we will see you tomorrow for some racing. Thank you very much. If you have questions, let us know.